Congratulations. Um, so I am going to kick things off with a land acknowledgement. So ECMA would like to acknowledge that we are in Mi'kma'ki, uh, the ancestral and traditional lands of the Mi'kmaq people. Our artists, staff, and supporters acknowledge the Peace and Friendship Treaty signed in the territory and recognizes that we are all treaty people. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the support from the province of Nova Scotia, Cape Breton Regional Municipality, Factor, Music Action, and the Government of Canada through the Department of Canadian Heritage. And of course, as you can see by my background, I am representing our presenting sponsor TV today, who, because of their generous support, have allowed us all to participate in this conference free of charge. So we are forever grateful for that. And without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Maestro to uh, take us into this conversation. I'm really looking forward to this. And thank you both, uh, Jordan and Maestro, for being here. Allison, thanks for having us, man. I feel great, mm -hmm. but I got to keep it real, man. Jordan, I'm jealous of you right now, fam. <laughs> What's up? Because you got th th that glass of red wine looking good, son. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Great, you know, so some Chilean, some Chilean goodness, you know. Let that glass of red wine look good right before the acknowledgements. My man did a little so like that, nah, you know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, love, our father, what's up? That's, I feel blessed, man. I just wanted to say, um, Allison, thank you for um, thinking of me uh, to be a part of this celebration, man. You know, when when I think of music, I don't, you know, coming up, I was able to travel across Canada. And I remember the first time I did a show at the Forum in, in Halifax. And it was like, I ain't never, like in the school, they never taught us about like in Scotia, like, like, like the brothers and sisters over there like that. So I was like, where am I right now? This was crazy. It was really dope. And I was excited to, to go back to Toronto and tell people like, yo, you see all the black people I see in, in, in Nova Scotia, fam. Yeah. And it, it was really exciting for me. You can see the smile on my face because right behind me, I recently received a diploma from the um, from the college N NCC and that NSCC and that was for uh, it's an honorary diploma. So I'm actually an honorary Scotian. But the place I got that, that? was the way the place they did the convocation was at the forum where I performed back in '91. So here I am, my gown on, feeling like like a hip hop. You know what's crazy about that story? Was that I'll never forget that night. In 91, because I just moved in 89 to back to Nova Scotia to Halifax. Okay. And I yeah. never forget that night. My mom didn't let me go up to form. I was pissed, bro. I couldn't. I exactly. Was you know, you ain't going up to no rap concert. I remember Shy Love and all them was up there rocking. Shy Love and all them was there. Yeah, yeah. But I remember, I remember not being able to go that night. I was mad that night. <laughs> so we would have been able to do a, a collaboration earlier if that was the right, case. You know but, what I mean? Yeah. But how cool is that? That the fact that the same place where, um, I performed in 1991 was the same place that I was I was receiving such a, an, a, an award and I, and I felt blessed to have that man just to be there and to see that regardless of whatever we do you know for me hip hop is the foundation and from that I've been able to expand and do different things man you know so so that's the vibe right there because I keep say, telling people man words are powerful and we have the opportunity right now to say and do something that makes a big difference and throughout the years people ask you know if I got any advice, and I say very simple, I got advice, just don't make records, man. Make history. I say don't make records, but make history. Anybody can make a record, but by making history is when you do something and you say something that people remember years and years later. I feel blessed just to see the, um, you know, we're celebrating the ECMAs, man, but just a couple of days ago, the Junos were on, and um, I thought Cardinal did a great job of having the, like the rap category, because this is the 30 year anniversary for that. So it was Mishy Me, it was, uh, you know, Cardi did an excellent job hosting. He brought out Julie Black. Then um, then he he introduced Nav, who was in Los Angeles. And then um, it was just dope because, you know, I wasn't in Toronto. I wasn't in Los Angeles. I was in New Brunswick, man. Like we shot that right at Imperial Theater. St. John, New Brunswick, like my part. And it just reinforces not only the talent, but how vast this country is with music and this specific part of the country with the Maritimes, man. You got a lot of really dope artists. So even though you weren't allowed to come check me the forum in 91, we rocking right now, my G. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, man. 
So what was it like? Because I, I remember, like, some people know, some people don't know. But um, I moved to St. John in October, and um, I got a radio show on 97.3 called Maestro in the Maritimes, which is really cool. But I had the chance to, to interview you. And I just wanted to let, you know, you let people know, what's it like, you know, coming up doing music out of Scotia? Man, it's, it's a beautiful thing because there's so many different vibes and different, like, genres and different different so many talented people out there you know what I mean in, in the whole maritime to be honest so for me it was it was a little because I came I, I grew up in Toronto I lived in Toronto for 10 years before mm -hmm. yeah uh, back in Nova Scotia but I was born in Halifax and um you know coming into you know down home it was for me I was always R&B it was an R&B thing but you know knowing you know vibing with some some guys that play rock some rock bands and you know what I mean some folk singers and stuff like that it was just dope and definitely the gospel you know what I'm saying so it just, it was great to be around so many different, you know, you know genres of, of music. Because, you know, at the end of the day, it is music is the, is the one, the number one genre, you know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I mean, that that's, that's the ticket right there, man. I mean, I was never one of those artists to be like, I'm, I'm done. I ain't going to make no more music because this is what we do. Like when I won my first, the first Juno award, I felt good, but I'm gonna show y'all, man. This is what the first Juno Award looks like, man. Wow. This is the joint. This is the joint right here. You know what I'm saying? Got it, yeah. So I mean, it looks like a a big water bottle, right. like a big water bottle. So I was nominated for five. Um, one was uh one of the nominations was a uh, single of the year, but this guy named Brian Adams kicked my butt, so that wasn't gonna happen. Yeah. But I felt good. I, I won two of those. But then um, Leonard Cohen was receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award. And his award was about the size of a grand piano. They had to push his award on stage. He had a standing ovation. And here I am standing with my two liquor water bottles looking like, damn, you know, I, I did reach a level. But then, you know, there's more expectation for me. There's more things for me to do. And I think that's the beauty with music where, you know, you've won a lot of, you've been, it's not even like the, the acrylic, man. It's not even the accolade. It's like you reach a certain level, then there's more to go. You know what I'm saying? Right. For you, like, uh, that just gives me a question to ask you, bro. It's like, how does it feel to be like, you know, when people call you the godfather, like you are that, that one that, that started this whole thing. How does it feel to be like, and, and to be able to handle what you've done and, and be successful? And like you said, branch out, do so many things. How does it feel when people call you that Godfather name? Because sometimes I wanted to say, "What's up, Godfather?" But I don't know how you feel completely about it. Like, how does that? Like, you know what I mean? I'm gonna answer the question in two parts. I'm gonna break something down that I realized today. One, thank you. I I think a Godfather is chosen. You know that. So my 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 community, I was chosen. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but I'm gonna tell you why I try to stay humble with stuff because when I came up. Whew, there was a brother by the name of Ben Johnson, who was the fastest man in the world, man. He was out of Toronto, Jamaican born. And he went to, uh, he was, I went to a school called Lamaru High School. And I was in grade 12 and 13. And Ben Johnson would slide through, you know what I mean? And it was like, everybody was like, this is God body right here. This is the dude. And this is before the Olympics. This is before he raced Carl Lewis for his, his Olympic uh, gold medal. And I was just like, this guy's the greatest. This is Ben Johnson. And we just knew this is before internet. It was just word of mouth and people knew like, that's that, that's that guy, you know? So I remember when he beat Carl Lewis, that was bigger than Kawhi Leonard coming to Toronto and us winning, the Raptors winning. It was bigger than that because you, at that time there was never been a black athlete or black celebrity on any, anywhere on any, medium if it was sports um music whatever to be acknowledged on the global stage so when he got that gold medal it was like raptors winning that's the only thing i could i could really describe that as it was like the raptors winning the nba championship when 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 ben johnson won that gold medal beating carl lewis in the olympics 1988 olympics man and then after there was a scandal, there was a scandal with, with, with uh, they found out that a lot of the athletes were using substances, illegal substances, steroids, what have you. 
And I just even remember my mom's man, just looking at, at the news, man. You know, you know the news, and and she just, ah. and I felt that, man. And I felt that, and 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 people felt that it was, you know, he went from being Canadian, and they just made him he Jamaican born Ben Johnson. They were making statues of this dude and everything, man. And I never forgot that. So the very next year, '89, it was when Let Your Backbone Slide came up, man. So now. There was no other reference point in anything besides me. The only one I could look at was Ben Johnson. And I was always scared because even though people give me love, I just knew in a split second that could switch. And I, I look just like that brother over there, man. So I remember going to church with my mom's one time, Jordan, and this girl asked me for my autograph. And I felt kind of awkward, you know, you're in the Lord's house, but people's, but you want to make sure he feel good. So I signed the thing. And then her dad just whispered in my ear, man. He's like, yo, just don't ruin this for us, fam. Bro, I'm getting chills right now thinking that I never forgot that. Right. Never, for, ever forgot that because we're in a position right now to do great things. And I just never wanted to embarrass my family. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm a grown man. I still strive to, to do the right thing and stay out of trouble or let trouble follow me even because I don't want to embarrass my son. You see what I'm saying? And I stay humble. The reason I'm telling you all this is because when I'm, I'm called Godfather this or that, I can't walk with that all the time. Yeah. I just got to just know and give thanks. Yeah. Plus, I know I'm dope, but I don't got to just, I don't got to, um, I don't always got to stress it over stress it all the time. You feel me? So that's how I feel. I feel grateful. But my son, he, you know, he's got school finishing in, 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 a, in, a, in a couple of days. What's up with summer school? Like, or what's up with summer activities? What's up? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's kind of where my head is. I just wanted to share that with you because it's like, you know, I'm the first artist, I'm the first black artist to go platinum in Canada, man, you know? And a lot of times it's like people try to forget about certain things and then they bring it back conveniently. But if I was to really lie on my laurels, I wouldn't be creating like children books and stuff like this, man, you know? I got this joint that just dropped, Stick to Your Vision, Young Maestro Goes to School. You know, the four was written by Carter now, you know, but then the first one is stick to your vision, how to get past the hate, the hurdles and haters to get to where you want to be. Chuck D from Public Enemy, he wrote the forward on this. And this is a part of the school curriculum at Nova Scotia Community College, man. Like, how cool is that to have like, to have mandatory, a book that's mandatory reading, you know, and this is like 18 and up demographic. This is for the babies. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to say, and this is what I'm trying to say is it's like music. We have the opportunity right now to impact our community, fam. You know? So that's kind of where my head is at. For sure. But yeah, but like I got a question for you, man. Like, like when we did that song, Wish I Could. Mm -hmm. And for people listening, Wish I Could was a dub J produced song. And it was about the gun violence in Toronto. And it featured myself, Jordan, JD Era, Biz Loke, uh, J uh, I said JD Era, Turk, Roni, and my brother Jellystone. What made you sele select that beat? I mean, yeah, because it was three, it was three beats. I think I selected the beat, but what made you um come up with that hook like that, B? Um, that's well, that was the vibe. It was just after Littles, you know, or you know, my my bro. You know, really, mm. um, he was a Scotian brother, right? Yeah, yeah, he grew up in Uniac Square. We grew up together. In the he was Uniac too. Yeah, bro. Yeah, ah. yeah, really, yeah, yeah. So, did you know him from down here? Like, from Tur yeah, we grew up together. He used to, yeah, he used to steal. Like when I was hooping, he used to come steal my ball, run away. Little guy in the hood always run and steal my ball. Like, see him the next couple of days, he give it back to me and shit, my bro, right? But um, it was after Littles had uh, was murdered and um, Dub. Um, I guess Dub and Littles were, they had a relationship. So he was like, like you know, you know, I'm, I'm sick of this shit, you know, and he said, told me the plan, you know, him and Peter Jackson, they told me the plan. And it was like, yo, anything, like, especially if it's inspired by my homie Little, that's why like he used his son on the cover and stuff. And and I was just like, yeah, man, let's get it. And I went to, I was on my way to the studio when he sent the beat, the beat over, but he told me that you picked the beat. He had a couple, but he only sent me the one that you picked. He said, no, Maestro picked this one. <laughs> So we just, I went in, bro, it took me 15 minutes because it was just something that just, it's just so, you know, you hear it happens too too much and it's just like something that, you know, you just want to get off your chest about that shit. I'm just, it's just upsetting that, 
these young men are out here doing this thing, this to each other, man. It's just, it's, it's sad, but you know, so you really came on that and really, you know, that the energy was right. It, it was like quick. And then I know he started floating it around. Did you, did you go second? Did you go first? Or, I went uh, first. You went first and the air come in. Yeah. Yeah. You went first. So, yeah. So you tell me you wrote that in 15 minutes, B? And it was quick. I didn't even, I was just little, put the mic on, boom, boom. Yeah. Quick. It was Not quick. Fine. That's dope, guy. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. The ill part with that song is my verse is on. Um, my verse was um when you listen to the lyrics in that JD Ever's verse comes in right after. We the the words are rhyming, man. I know, I know. And that was like ill. I go, Ever, did you hear my verse? He's like, nah, B. It was just like together, right? Like everything it came together crazy, man. But like, how cool is it to have a song? That went number one in the top 100 on iTunes, you know what I'm saying? So to me, that's a that's a blessing right there. But uh, that's the vibe, man. My whole thing is 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 just expanding and knowing that you know we're here for a reason, man. We have the opportunity to um to make an impact on people, man. You know, and because when they say you got 15 minutes of fame, my whole thing is it took me longer than 15 minutes to write the first verse to let your backbone slide. So you you got to get used to the face, fam. I'm going I'm to be around in a minute. I'm going to be expanding, yeah. doing acting, yeah. doing different things. You know you know what I like was though? I like when um I was filming this, that TV show called Mr. D. Mm -hmm. Because every summer I was in Halifax, man, every summer for like eight I, years in a row. You always hit me up like, I'm coming back. Film. What's that? <laughs> You'd always hit me up over the years. Remember, like you always be in town, hit me up. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. So, yeah, I remember that. So, so that's the ticket with me. Like, I mean, hip hop was the foundation, and because of that, I was able to do a lot of different things, man. A lot of different things, just um, you know, meeting a lot of people, different heads, what have you. So, so that's the ticket right there, man. So my whole vibe is now. Now that I'm, I'm, I'm 53 years old, man. So my whole thing is I'm going to continue doing music, but it's very important for me to uh, expand. And um, I'm very proud of this book. As a matter of fact, I'm going to Fredericton Friday because a car dealership bought like 50 copies of the book. And they, we're going to go to a school in, 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 in uh, Fredericton and, and distribute the book, man, because I want this to be a part of the school curriculum as well, you know? Uh, yeah, man. Congrats on that too, man. That's yeah, cool. man. Yo, I started right, fam. I wrote, I started writing this September 8th. We were done writing first draft September 27th, man. Nice. nice. You know? Yeah. So like my whole thing is just about expanding and um, I want people to get used to this guy right here because I'm Maestro. Maestro's all right. But young Maestro, blah, he's a whole dip. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Maestro's cool, yo. But, but this dude, this dude. The parts start coming, you start getting the parts in his hair, and you know, things are changing. It's a different guy. It's a young maestro. <laughs> you know, so my whole thing is, is just about expanding, man. It's just about doing different things. And it was great to see, like, Mishy Me, you know, do her thing. She looked beautiful in that white gown, man. Holy. And to see Hawaii Mighty close the show after, it was dope. It just made me feel like I miss Toronto, but it made me feel like, you know, I'm, I'm talking about the Junos again. It made me feel like, yeah, I must have really done something cool. And the fact that I was in New Brunswick when we shot it, that shows me that I'm still doing cool things, man. We're still, yeah. still evolving, you know? Definitely. Yeah, man. So, so that's the ticket, man. So your last project, when did the last project drop, huh? Um, it was in, uh, just two months ago, about two, mm. two months ago. Ralph, it's called Ralph. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since I put out a full project, full album. So, you know, mm. time with this one. I had some projects in between time, but you know, my time with this one. Back with another one, you know. Yo, I want to tell you something. I don't know if I ever told you this, man, but it's like this is not the first song we did. The first song we did was a song called "Underestimated." Underestimated, yes, yeah. And that that was on um that ended up being on NHL 17. But initially, it was supposed to be me, you, and Rich Kid. Right, I remember this. Yeah, yeah, and then era, and then era. Yeah. So what happened is, you sounded good on it. Rich kid sounded good on it. I didn't like the way it sound. I sounded on it. Okay. So I never put it out. That was supposed to be a 2013 project. And um, 
I remember seeing you at the June, it was like a Juno, um, you must've got nominated that year. Cause I, I saw you and I came up to you and I go, Jordan, man, that song's not going on the album. And the way your face looked like you were so disappointed, it hurt me. Like I was like, yeah, oh. like what gonna do? <laughs> Yeah. Cause you look like you wanted, it and I felt I felt like dab, like I let, I let I felt like I let you down, you know what I'm saying? So then that was, that, huh? You cut those vocals at CBC, right? You cut my vocals at CBC. At CBC, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, I, I just didn't like the way I sounded. So I'm like, nah, I'm not putting that out, man. But then when the Pan Am games rolled around, I'm like, I started thinking back, and I'm like, yo, that that demo I had underestimated, is kind of cool. I went back, revisited it, and I go, you know what? Let's just change the music because the hook part of the hook is dope. We'll keep Jordan on that. How about if I bring my man JD Era in and we turned it into something like yeah. better than the, I mean, shout out to Tom Mason for the original, but the triple A beat, it sounded like a real anthemic championship right. Pan Am slash Olympics right. like tune. Yeah. And the reason why um, I'm proud of it to, to, to put it out then is to tell artists, man, don't give up on your music. Yeah, man. Don't give up on your music. That's an old tune that I had, man. That 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 a lot of people have been like, whatever. But I no, I like the title. It symbolized um hard work, it symbolized perseverance, and it symbolized us because we've been underestimated for such a long time. And I used the metaphor for sports, and it turned out to be a, a really dope song. That was my first song that did did really well on um on iTunes, you know? But um I guess I just want to say that to artists, just don't give up on your music, man. And then I started going back, looking at older songs that I had that I never released. I had some bangers, man. You know, I, all you got to do is refurbish certain things. That's why I say, don't make records, make history. Always go into the, to the, to the, when you do a song, it's one thing to have music that's, that's timely, but to have music that's timeless is, is a whole different game. Cause all I had to do was refurbish a couple things. I've been doing that too with a lot, a lot of this, um, like this Ralph album, actually a lot, a lot with this album was like the oldest record that I did on it was like seven, eight years old the oldest mm. album for the album. So I like, I've been reproducing like half of these joints except for like, well, 30% of it is like new, like, you know, closer to the end of finishing the project. Mm. But I was doing like, like I had like four or five joints that I was reproducing over like five years period of time. You know what I mean? So I was like working on a few of them that I knew I really liked. And then I just finally got them to a point where I was ready to put them out. So what's your what's your writing um style like? Like how your process? Like how's that go? Do you like co-writers or you like to like I co-write? Um, you know, I work with writers like Sebastian Cole is like one of the dopest writers I've worked with. Um I've worked with uh, I've been in the studio with Frank Ocean before he was Frank Ocean of Ron and Burrell. How was he to work with? Man, gen just genius. It was just, it was genius. He just like, he heard my voice. He's like, like, all right, uh, put, what, what, what kind of beat you working with? I threw a beat on I like, and then he literally wrote the song in his head in like five minutes, seven minutes. It felt like five minutes. It's probably about 15 to 20, but it just felt like five minutes. Like he just went in and just sang the whole lead in like 15, 20 minutes. So it was really dope. And, and Sebastian writes like that too a lot. So I've been around some dope writers that have been like picking at you, taking little, vibes of you know digging out my way into it because you know i've like i've been a late bloomer in this i wasn't really recording in my younger years it came later in my life you know what i'm saying oh fam let me tell you something you see me it's been a i'll lot be honest with you mm -hmm. i wish i could write fast like that man yeah man and sometimes they come out quick like that but it's like you know it's, it's, it's motivation to be able to do that sometimes you gotta take your time but but for me, it's just like, get them off, man. Like, you know what I mean? But don't forget, like, I like, I'm starting to have the problem where it's like, I'm forgetting records that I did like, like a month ago. And like, oh shit, I hear it like, a month, like two months later, I'm like, whoa, what the? <laughs> I, yo, I, yo, but watch this, watch this. I remember talking about the Raptors mm -hmm. uh, a little while ago, you know, and um, I tested myself when the Raptors won the championship, man. It was a Thursday night, I was home. And I said, let me just test my writing skills. <laughs> And fam, I wrote a song called This Is Epic. And it was just basically the feeling that I had, excuse me, it was just a feeling I had of when they won and when they were going through the playoff. It's a good tune, man. But I wanted to see if I could move like the young boys, man. I said, okay, boom, I'm gonna write this on a Thursday. 
I'm gonna record it on a Friday. I'm gonna I'm record the video on a Saturday and the song's gonna be out on Monday. What? You know what I mean? Like, like I want it to be like, cause I see how the man and the young boy do the take and I'm like, yo, backbone still slide it. Yeah, yeah, me try to take. So but watch this, so the song, I wrote it. it was beautiful. The hook, melodies, if you go on, 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 on spot, it's called This is Epic. I'm so proud of that because this is me writing quick and testing myself, my writing um, ability, concept, everything. So boom, did that, recorded the Friday. The Saturday, I think the DJ, TJ, was he was mixing it. Okay. Sunday, I shot a video. Okay. The video was supposed to be out on Monday, but the guy wanted to shoot the video. He couldn't make it. He got a next youth. He was trash. So... I couldn't use his video. Yeah, yeah, so I yeah. waited, I had to wait till and find another videographer. I shot it on the Wednesday, right at, at uh, Dundas Square, right before they took out the banners. Mm -hmm. And it was up out on the Thursday. Yeah, yeah. So that's showing me that I can adapt and I could evolve. Do you, um, do you record at all at the crib? Like you got a, a little setup like Mike at the crib where you do, do vocals? Nah, I mean, I could, but me and TJ, my engineer, we're so tight like this. It's like, I'll yeah. come up with melodies and I'm on my phone giving the melodies he has to beat. He's like, ah, in his mind, he's coming up with instrumentations and stuff like that in his mind already. I think that's the beauty of That's how I like to work too. I work like that too. Like, I like, we got, um, me and my girl, we got a set up here, but I like to work like that too. Just quick, boom, 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 here and then set them up. But recently, I've been like, yeah. since the pandemic, bro, I had to learn how to really record myself, bro. Like, I can't. You had to I, learn to what? I had to learn to record myself and, like, really lay, like, because I was, I got, I got stuck in Nova Scotia when, uh, mm. when the first lockdown happened. You know what I mean? So I was there and I'm like, yeah, you know what's so funny, fam? Like, I came here because I'm in, like, that's the reason why we moved up here. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't really motivated that much to record, but I was motivated to write because this dude, this dude is going to, he's going to win an ECMA award for best children's album. The Young Maestro Goes to School album. That's I'm good. working on, like, I'm working on a, I get a hook on there? <laughs> you want a hook? Okay. <laughs> I got you for a hook. Let me get a hook on there, cuz. <laughs> Young Maestro, let me get let me get a hook with Young Maestro, bro. I'll get a hook. I'm old Maestro. Maestro, I'm a Maestro, but this guy, <laughs> yeah. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. No, but that's what I'm doing. So I did a lot of writing, writing, and, and I because TJ me me and him know each other, so he'll have the beat and I'll just mumble it, whatever, like this. And in his mind, he's hearing. I'm hearing. I'm putting spaces between stuff, and I know what the reverb he's putting in. I know the, 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 the how it's going to sound already because we're, we're like. We like that. But when it comes to me, when it comes to writing, I'm a concept driven artist. So I'll take time sharpening the ax and it's faster to chop the tree down after because I, I spent so much time. Yeah, that's so like when I came out, yeah, like when I came out with the black tuxedo, mm -hmm. I made sure I was a maestro. Okay, boom. That's what took a lot of time, just the concepts. And then after that, the music started coming because I say like the words, write themselves man mad will always rhyme with glad always but it's the concept that takes the, the longest for me once i come up with a dope concept things start coming into fruition and whatnot you know mm -hmm. so so that's that's kind of the ticket with me but uh, i'm going to continue evolving i'm going to continue um you know working on stuff but um to me it's just about expansion man like when i saw tupac in juice i was like all right this guy's a dope mc Mm -hmm. but he's acting too so i said let me try, try that let me try to evolve too you know right right, right. Yo, man. So, so that's okay. the vibe man i mean like i said man we started at one point and now we're at the top of the global food chain when it comes to like music and you know getting back to wish i could and just getting back to to hip-hop and how we're perceived as black music as black musicians as black young men all the media really shows is like the negativity, man. About another aspiring rapper shot or, or what have you. But when you really think about it, Jordan, like I keep telling people, there's never been another genre of music that showed more love than hip hop. Because I can't remember Mick Jagger making a collaboration with Paul McCartney. I can't recall Willie Nelson making a collaboration with, with Kenny Rogers, unless it, it's like some We Are The World type record. But like, how many album hip hop albums do you know where there's no collaboration? Jay-Z's always collaborating with somebody, you know? Even Rakim, like, like think about it. We, we show more love and collaborations together than any other genre of music. And, and if we could just remember that, 
remember what happens when we come together. Look, I mean, look what happened when we did Wish I Could, but like the average hip hop artist always does collaborations, man, with another brother, you know? And we just gotta remember that unity that we have and what happens when strength in numbers. But the way the media has us thinking, it's, it's all about divide and conquer, man. But if we come together, it's a whole different dynamic, man. So I just want artists um, to know that. And another thing too with me is like, I'm a huge fan of Quincy Jones. And the reason why I'm a fan of Quincy Jones like that is because he was a jazz trumpet player, fam. And then in the eighties, he started making disco records for Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there was a lot of jazz aficionados be like, yo Q, what are you doing with this music? It's garbage, it's trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, yeah. But he was like, nah, man, this is what the young boys is listening to. I'm gonna add my own spice to it. I know I'm in my fifties now, but this dude named Michael Jackson from the, who used to be the Jackson Five, he's, 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 he, I got this idea for this album called Thriller. Yeah. That Thriller was a disco album. So when I look at like boom bap, like old school hip hop and like trap or drill, that's very similar to like jazz and disco. So like the music coming out right now, that's like, that's disco, man. That's like, it's like, it's a 30 year gap. Yeah. But if I was to be like the type of artist, man, them young boys is weak, man. Right, that right. music is whack. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to open up and be like. You gotta evolve and be, and be able to, you know, move and shake with the times, right? Like that's important. That's important to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah man. And, and and it's like, that's what I'm saying. Like even like me coming with a, with a book for a younger demographic, it's just about expanding your career and doing different things as opposed to be sitting in, in a little box like this, because that's what happens a lot with hip hop, you know? So, yeah. but that's the ticket. But yo, Allison, I want to know if anybody, if you got questions or if anybody got questions, because me me and Jordan, we, we could talk like this for, for a minute, you know? Yeah. We just don't want to yeah. overlook anything. I just want to give people like a brief outlook of me. Yeah. yeah, I'd say anybody who wants to jump in with a question at any point, it's you know, starting now, um, maybe unmute yourself and just let it out. What's up, guys? We're Sonic Detour. What's up? Peace, peace. How's it going? I'm good, man. I'm just chilling here, man. Look at those guitars in the background looking fresh. Yeah, man. We got uh, we got our own studio here in St. John. Okay, okay. Yeah. Where's the studio? Uh, West St. John. New Brunswick or, or Newfoundland? No, sorry. St. John, New Brunswick. We're in the same city. So you going to come check out this. So where's the studio West? Yeah, the studio's West, bro. And actually, that's why I jumped on right now is because Sonic Detour, even though we're a rock band, alt rock, uh, really whatever anybody wants to call us, hip hop is a huge influence to us. Yeah, dope. So, so we're okay, listen, listen, listen. Okay, don't get me too excited yet. West where? Like West where? Uh, do you know where the Irving Nature Park is? I heard about it, but I don't, you know, how far west? It's it's actually, if you Google it, it's the Maritime Opportunity Center. And it's basically, it's office spaces. And we rent uh, a space for our studio or slash jam spot. Okay. And uh, we just put our, through, man. you got to come through. And that, that's what I was going to ask you, man. We're kind of fanboying right now, but we just- No, wanted, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. If you, wanted to <laughs> if you wanted to collaborate with us, come in and jam. I'm doing Yo, feature. Yo, I'm, I'm coming. We come, got two guitar feature. players, myself on bass, a vocalist. We got a DJ that scratches and samples, and we got a drummer. Holy smokes, man. So we were nominated for a loud album of the year. Loud recording. Of the loud recording. recording of the year, sorry. So watch. I mean, I don't know too much. I know where the Sobeys is. I know where the No Frills is. You know, I don't so know. So I'll meet you at Sobeys, and you can follow me. <laughs> 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 now nah, we do it up, man. But, um. No, that's good. Thanks for the invite, man, because I don't know but too many. I wanted to jump back, and you guys, you and Jordan were talking about your recording. So Marcus and I write a lot of our songs. And a lot of times in the middle of the night, I'll be laying there in my bed, and I'll hear, because I'm the bass player, I'll hear this bass riff in my head. And I'll get up, and I'll grab my phone and start singing it in my phone, if you will. And then I'm, and then I'm sending it over to Marcus and saying, what do you think of this? Many, uh, many a nights I'm woken up with emails and messages of, Ref, refs and mouse. Two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Two thirty in the morning. But but yeah, man. Like so, you you mentioned that hip hop's black music, but I feel like I'm here to remind people that rock music is actually black music as well. 
Yeah, of course, of course, man. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I'm just coming from my perspective of my genre of music. But, but, but that's know. just it, though. My 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 perspective is my my roots is gospel, R and B, and hip hop. Like that's yeah. I'm an '80s kid. I was born in '86. I grew up. Wow. Got like Aretha Franklin every Sunday. My mother still plays it every Sunday. I walk in the house. Yeah, Aretha's yeah. playing. Our, so like uh, to our, me, our drummer just walked in the door. Sorry. So so to me, yeah, to get you on a track would just it'd be dope, and it would just yeah. show the world that we, we do dominate these genres. Listen, man, I, I work with the trues already. I mean, you know, what you do go on YouTube when we're done. Check yeah. out this one I did with Sam Roberts. All right. Called, um, I seen yeah. Sam Roberts in Montreal, man. He was dope. Called History Repeated, and then boom, then check out this tune I did with um with uh the trues. And then I, I did another joint with Danko Jones. Nice. You, know, you know me, like I, come on, man. I'm a rocker, man. I grew up on Q107, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yo, yo, you want to hear something ill? You know yes. who, who, who inspired me to write Let Your Back Boy Slide? Are you ready for this? Yep. Billy Squire. Oh, what? <laughs> Billy Squire. For real? So for people listening, Billy Squire had Big B. Ah. Got the big boom, pitch, boom, boom, tsh, boom, pitch, boom, boom, tsh, right? That's Big B. But Billy Squire also had a tune called The Stroke. And yeah. I, I know they played at the gym. Stroke, man, stroke, man. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> sing, it, sing, it, sing it again. Sing it again. Sing it again. Stroke, man, stroke, man. Stroke. Yo, so, so. So that's, that's our drummer that's that our drummer. just walked through the door. Yo, yo, so the drummer, I mean, he know he knows Billy Billy Squire, but like I do. I'm an I'm an '80s freak. That's I don't live in an so so show. he said. Try to make my backbone slide. Joke man, joke man, right? So that's what inspired me to write "Let Your Backbone Slide," man. So I'm a rocker, man. I grew up listening to like like tons of like Deep Purple. Um, uh, Glenn was, Hughes, man. The Rush, you know what I'm saying? So that's yep. why that's why I'm so eclectic, like with so many different genres of music. My and favorite bassist is Victor Wooten. Oh, crazy. Yeah. I try to play like him, but it's you, you know hard. who's my favorite bass? One of my favorite bass? You might need to know. Niels Ornsted Peterson. I have no idea who ah, that is. Come on, son. Come on, son. Oh, hey, step your game up. <laughs> Let me check this guy out. <laughs> He's a Swedish bass player. And he did a well. I, I you know, I, we sample. I'm from a I'm a DITC fan, so we used to dig in the crates and sample. Um, but he was a double bass player. Niels Ornstead Peterson, man, he worked with Oscar Peterson, the, the great Montreal jazz pianist. And um, but now, like when it comes to cross genre, I've been doing that from time. That's nothing new, man. So like my thing right right now is just about like, you know, we're in survival mode right now until this COVID cloud clears up. But I think you know what music did if it wasn't for COVID. I'm telling you, I wouldn't have been writing this book, you know? You know, I, I'm glad you said that because COVID was a blessing in disguise for Sonic Detour uh, because we got our album written, recorded, finished, and uh, it would have been almost, I don't think we would really would have did it with without COVID because we had so much downtime. Yeah, yeah, man. So, 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 so that's the writing. Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I say, I say, so that's the thing right there, man. Like when one door closes, another door opens, man. You know. Yeah. But um, no, I'm glad you guys are thinking. We'll we'll exchange information. You know. Cool. Uh, you can you can hit us up on uh, everywhere. You, we, everywhere. We I'll, I'll, we'll message you. We'll message. Yeah, just message me, man. But it, it was great talking to you. Um, Sonic Detour in full full effect. Is there anybody else? I know Abigail will prevail. But is there anybody else out there? Like we got Colette. We got. I do April. have one question. I'm really curious. So I'm actually a 16 year old singer songwriter from Newfoundland. And I'm just curious of like, what's been the hardest thing you've had to overcome in the music industry? Yo, Jordan, you want to answer that first? Um, yes, I guess. Well, for me, it's, it's been I mean, it's it's tough to say because I've had you know some some national international success you know as well as national success, but gaining an audience like you know it's just it's like it's like everything in in uh, you know with social media and everything it's numbers it's a numbers game. So the hardest obstacle is just get is gaining those fans, those followers, those those diehard people that are just going to come and support you. 
that's like because there is no the other obstacles are just stuff that you're, you're going to go through in the, in the industry and learn as you go you're going to there's going to be bumps it's like anything in life you're going to fall you're going to get up you're going to learn not to follow or go walk down that path again let me not do this you know you're going to go through all these things but i guess it's just the, the the biggest obstacle is just you know reaching a wider audience that's been pretty much the only thing that i would say that i i think about that even, even crossing my mind that bothers me at all you know what i'm saying it's like you know how do i get oh it's, yeah, sorry i don't know what's happening here later am i still in here yeah that's dope that's dope i feel with me right. Right, um here we go. i think the biggest obstacle is myself mm -hmm. because yeah i feel the biggest obstacle is myself because i had to convince myself that um i'm from canada born and raised and if people told me I was dreaming, you know, this before the Aubrey era, you know what I'm saying? So like, there was no, there was no um, point of reference of any type of success here. So I've been the underdog for years where people tell me I'm dreaming, wasting my time, wasting my life. So then when I came out, the obstacle was myself because I had to be able to block stuff out. You know, there's nobody on my street that had a gold record out before me or anything like that. So. I had to learn how to like block stuff off, like out and just maintain. And then that's when people like you. Then, you know, a couple albums later, they don't like you. And that hurts, man. You know, that hurt, like it sting. Like, yo, man, I thought you guys was feeling me. You don't, and just to watch, just to switch like, like that, then the phone ain't ringing no more. Like, damn, son, you know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden you put out a next tune, then the phone, start, the phone starts ringing again. It just, then you don't know who to trust. You feel me? You don't know who to really check in for you, who is not. And I'm watching certain things. I don't forget nothing. Certain man's ask for paper when you got it. And then when you need it, they ain't there for you. Like stuff like that. I'm the wrong dude for that because to me, it's it's about your 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 mentals a lot. So now they talk about like mental awareness. Back in the 90s, I didn't know about all them things. But I was smart because I created an app. And the app is called Go F Yourself. It's very, it's beautiful. <laughs> As soon as I press it, it's an amazing, it's an amazing app to, 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 to develop because it's like, it's called go F yourself. I'm really proud of this. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you rub me the wrong way, whatever it is. It's, it's amazing. I just press, it's like magic. I just press the app and, and the problems go away, fam. And I've learned to um, really block out um, like whackness from me, you know, and because if you, if, if your mind ain't straight, you can't create, man. You can't write songs, you can't do whatever. You gotta move, remove all the toxicity away from you. And the, and certain things people won't understand that, you know, why you you ain't ch checking for them no more. But in order to, if, if I didn't block them things out, I wouldn't be able to write songs like stick to your vision and whatever like that, because I'd be, going through the whole rigmarole, listening to what, if people check for me, if they don't check for me, whatever, like that. And, but I will say something that's beautiful is, is longevity. When people see that you've, you've traveled and they know, like Jordan, you know, there's cats who were hating on you back in the days, but they learn, even if they don't tell you, they have to see some type of like, they have to give you a certain love, even if it bothers them to see you still looking good, still doing music, still evolving. And they're the ones that weren't giving it to you back then. And you're shining still. It's like, wow, I was hating on this you. And he's still doing it, you know? And you don't got to be in their faces saying like what? You just know because the app, go F yourself. It's just a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, you're right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. exactly. Oh uh, yeah, no, for sure, man. I think like, you know, the stick to your vision thing is, just, it's like, you know, just focusing on getting them blinders, man. You know what I mean? You know, Coach K, when I play that St. of X basketball, he used to tell us, just don't read the ink. Like, wait till the year's over to read any, anything about that. Anybody writes about you or even thinks about you. Like you said, the app, <laughs> yeah, let them tell <laughs> You know what I mean? So just, just, just stay in focus, you know? And we love doing this, you know what I'm saying? That's why we're gonna, it's, it, it keeps us going. You know what I mean, Stro? Like this is, like, what are we gonna not do this no more? <laughs> like, you know, listen, like this listen, is the thing, right? <laughs> I'm gonna make music till I, I, I don't feel like making music no more. Exactly. You, you, listen, there was a point when I took 13 years mm -hmm. off of putting out an album, 13 wow. years, fam. Mm -hmm. So I had little singles here and there. I put out like an EP there and there, but, but, but from an album perspective, 13 years, man. Mm -hmm. 
And um, within that time, I was you know writing books. I was doing a lot of acting. A lot of people saw me in movies like Paid in Full. I was on Honey. I was in Four Brothers. I was doing a lot of stuff, you know, in between them. But um, a part of artistry is letting it go for a minute and just let stuff, let life absorb life. That's a part of your creativity, right. you know. So when you come out, you just come out like like crazy, like I said, take that time to sharpen that ax. And sometimes metaphorically speaking, sharpening that ax is by leaving the studio for a while, man. Just mm -hmm. chill, you know? Right, yeah, it's like, yeah. It's, that's what the, that's the sharpening of. So when you do strike, you're ready. Yeah, you gotta let things come to you too. Unless you can't rush it, right? Rush this yeah. thing, like. So Abigail, I would say a lot of the times, like my biggest obstacle um, would probably be like myself, man, in a lot of ways, man. And another thing too, now that I'm older, it is intimidating um, to some capacity, knowing that like the average MC is like half my age and, and, you know, people don't really check for like, you know, you like when you're, when you're older and all them things. But in my mind, I'm mopped the floor with 99% of these youths. It doesn't matter, right? But I just know, no, real talk, real talk. But it's like, it's just a different time right now, man, you know, and I have to accept that and 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 that um, they, it's like a young boy's game to some capacity. But then that's why I mentioned to you guys Quincy Jones, man. You see, Quincy Jones came out doing jazz records, man, in, in the 80s and, and I mean, in the 50s and 60s, he was doing jazz records, man. And then in the 80s, he was doing Michael Jackson records. So my whole thing is like, just keep keep making music, keep evolving, man, and just grow, you know? But yo, we got any more questions? Thanks so much, guys. I got a question or a couple comments, actually. It's April up here. So uh, I might be the only other person in St. John as well, Maestro. So big welcome. And clearly Sonic Detour and myself are going to have to show you the Irving Nature Park and some cool locations in Uptown. Um, oh, there's somebody I think you might know that I met down in New York who's become a, a colleague and a friend. Um, the Public Enemy days. You know Hank Shockley? Have you met him yet? Yeah. No, nah, I met Hank Shockley in passing, but Chuck D actually wrote the foreword for my book. But, uh, but I'm a huge fan. Like Hank Shockley produced or co-produced the greatest hip-hop album of all time, which is It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. So, man, you're lucky. That's a blessing for you to meet Hank Shockley, man, you know? Well, if um, I'm a friend with um, Jeff Liberty and Paul Milner, who I know locally here, that so at some point I'm sure we'll connect. I'd love to connect you with him. But my question for you, you know, in your career, what was that point? And maybe it was like the progression of the team members that you added and how they found you. But like, what was that moment where you really felt like you were getting momentum or like a, a person or just that moment where you're like, okay, I got it. Now I all the faith that you had and all the perseverance finally like cracked and you saw the path straight ahead. There's different phases, man. There's different phases. So like when I was younger, there used to be a show on, on much music called electric circus. So when I performed electric circus, there was a dude that was just visiting named Stevie B and he was a big, um, like dance artist at the time. So he put us onto his label LMR records that he was signed to. And that connection right there was like, now it's like you got, even though they were a tiny, tiny company in, in New York, they were willing to put a couple of dollars up for my project and pay for like the video. Once the video came out, cause we didn't really have videos. We had like light rotation thing on much music, you know, like little, you know, but when the, the, the video came out, that was the game changer right there. When the Let Your Back Won't Slide video came out, you know? That was a lot of people's first time ever seeing like a, a Canadian hip hop artist on a, like an official video. I'm not talking about the little thing where you shoot. I'm talking about a fit because that wasn't even my very first video. My very first one was called I'm Showing You. But a, with a budget and everything, man, that was the game changer right there, man. That was the game changer right there. So that's what I would say. And there's different parts of my career when there's a certain thing that happens when you can just see a ripple effect, you know, but that was probably one of the first ripple effects that, that I remember. And not only for me personally, um, for everybody, for the country, you know, so respect. And yo, we go uptown, me and you, we go uptown, we go to um, Cask and Kettle or something, me and you. 
Sound good? Sounds good. I will, uh, IG, we'll connect. All right, Queen. Awesome. Thanks, guys. No problem. Any more questions to Jordan or me? Hey, Andre, what's up, Andre? I see you. How you doing? I got to shout out Andre in here, Andre Gracie. She's uh, speaking of people that, you know, reach out and make connections. She's one of them that's been there for me. Over Andre, time. nice meeting you. Andre, 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 yeah. She's, Andre, she's, nice meeting you. Yeah, she's, she's made some really, really dope connections over the years with me. and Wicked, uh, wicked. World. Yeah. So I got, I'd like to thank you while you're here. I see you over there. What's up? <laughs> yeah, you're amazing. We've had a great journey together. And I, I was, you know, just listening to you guys. This is uh, just really, really special today. I'm a little emotional because it's really, really great to, to be with you guys. And, you know, I think about the sacrifice that artists make. And Jordan, you know, I've watched, we're old friends and uh, you have to make moves, you have to persevere, you have to uh, reposition. And um, it's just been a real, uh, I feel like a mama <laughs> to you. Yeah, and it's been great. A lot of artists in, in Halifax, you're, you're, you know what I mean? You've, you've done a lot for a lot of you know, artists in, in the game. So on behalf of all of them, thank you. <laughs> thank you, sweetie. That's dope, man. That's good to know. I like to see, that's one of the beauties of, of this business right here. I've developed so many friends throughout the years, man. Like, yeah. you know, with music that I wouldn't have met, not just in Canada, but like New York, you know, LA. If it wasn't for hip hop, I wouldn't have met them if it wasn't for music. So it's a beautiful thing when I see relationships like that and you look back in time and you see people smiling at you and you're smiling back at them. I remember cats who used to have the, the mullet. They used to rock the mullet back in the days, man. It's like my man, um, Alan Reed, he used to do A&R up at uh, A&M Records. And then um, he became the president of Universal and years later he became the president of the Junos, Alan Reed, you know? So he came up, there's so much, so many different relationships, man. And, and, and what I encourage with artists is to like, try to maintain those relationships to those right ones. That's why, you know, this is a very legacy sensitive time for me. And I look back and I, and to see the love I got, that means I must have done something right throughout the years, man, for people to still check for me. You know what I mean? For, for such a long time. So that's what I encourage artists to do is like really think of um, your legacy, how you want to be remembered. I mean, um, April mentioned Hank Shockley, a uh, public enemy. Well, wh what did I learn from public enemy? I learned the importance of what? You know, um, I had media training watching Public Enemy with them. I watched how they corresponded with fans. I watched how they corresponded with, 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 with new artists. I watched how they corresponded with media and how Chuck D compartmentalized certain things. And it's very important to let artists know that they matter. You know, like my man Carter now wrote the foreword for this book, but I met him when he was 12. And <laughs> I must gave him some good advice or something because he really uh, checks for me. And how cool is it that we're at the Junos now and he's introducing me and he's doing big things. But I met him when he was 12 or 13 years old. And I told him to st you know, make sure you stay in school, make sure you do, you do good things. And, and um, you don't know what the ripple effect that, that, that positive energy that you give, man. So, so I love, I, I really encourage that people uh, embrace relationships, man with good people, but the, 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 the whack ones, always remember the app. Yeah, oh yeah, the, go flip them right off, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that app. I'm downloading that as soon as we're, we're done this. It's great, it's called, yeah. yeah I'm getting right go F yourself, it's great. I'm getting right on top of that app, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I put out an album in December. Hi, by the way, you said my name earlier and I almost cried. Um, Colette, what's happening? Oh, thanks so much for this, everything's been awesome. But uh, yeah, my friend made little cards for this album that we put out and we put out like 30 second videos and it's called Thank You, but the actual song title is Fuck You. And it's like a- Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So and you gotta get that, see, yo, you gotta get that song on the app, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm gonna be up on Instagram. You up. That song should be bummed. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. I, I think all artists need to have that man and anyone who's creative you need to be able to like you know all jokes aside you know you have to like block out um toxicity for your creativity man yeah you know you have to like i wouldn't be able to write out 
you know? I remember being in the studio with Tyson. Do you know Tyson could tell you, Jordan? Yeah, met Tyson. Tyson is an engineer from Toronto. He did like one of my albums and he did a lot of stuff with Ghetto Concept in the back in the days. But one thing he said with Carter now is he was good at managing his time. I'll never forget that. And um, managing your time as an artist is a beautiful thing, man. It's a beautiful thing. That means you have to say, okay, this is the time I'm devoting for this. And this is the time I have right here. Let me see what I'm made of. And um, I use that approach when it came to like projects, just try to, my best to uh, manage my time properly with him, you know? And another dude like Tupac, when Tupac came out of prison, oh my goodness, man, he was a beast. And I know that I, I do need rest, but when I have that energy, it's important to like, just go full out and just continue doing the thing. And another thing too, like I was saying with, with, with Sonic Detour, you know, with COVID, it's like COVID made me more aggressive business-wise, you know? COVID made me say, I'm not going to be like, yeah, you know, we'll do that thing in a couple of weeks. I'm like, no, because the mayor of, of New Brunswick could just be like, yo, we, we in the red right now. And, and that, that thing right there I was about to do, it's a wrap. You feel me? So I learned to be more aggressive with certain things and just be more uh, and realize there is time to sleep. You'll make time to sleep when you have to, you know? So there's a lot of good that came out of that. And a lot of relationships came out within the last few um Months. Who would have thought I would have been on my own radio show called Maestro in the Maritimes? Like, like, who would have thought? Like, you, you, you asked me that like last year this time. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, but because of COVID, you make certain decisions. But just remember, no matter what, nobody's one hundred percent okay. Everybody's been affected to one in one capacity or the other. And that being said, we have more similarities than differences, man. You know, culturally or whatever, man. Nobody's 100% okay, I'm not. I know I got a couple of screws loose because of this thing, I can't front, you know? So just remember, I know I'm not the only one. I know we're all like that, but another thing is I learned to have more patience and, and be more, show more compassion and, you know, have common sense sometimes. I, I think a lot of people lost a lot of common sense throughout the last year, what have you, but compassion and treating people good and treating people kind, I'll be honest, I couldn't want to be in a better place than St. John, man, because I've, I've met the kindest people ever, man, ever. Like Toronto's my favorite city, yeah, 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 whatever. But like, I'm, I'm from there, it's supposed to be. But the fact that this alleged global pandemic just is cancerous to all of us to make us relocate and make us, you know, come up with these contingency plans and whatever like that, I'm just gonna say like, to be here right now, people are really, really, really kind over here, man. And I think that's what we need. And I'm, it was an honor to, to um, perform for the Junos, right? At, at Imperial Theater right there, you know? It was, and to, for Cardinal to introduce me like that, I know it meant a lot for the, for the locals over here, man. And it's good to be, it's good to be here still, you know? But do we have any more questions or anything like that? Because I know it's we we're going a little more than an hour. But um, Allison, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling very grateful, actually. Um, if nobody has any questions, I did want to just say uh, I really am so grateful to both of you for taking the time to share your perspective, um, your experiences. Uh, your words of wisdom. There have been many, including that app that I'm sure everyone is going to go download. <laughs> um, but really, truly, honestly, thank you so much. Um, you know, I, I think that you've given everybody a lot to think about and um, sharing your experience has been really helpful. And I appreciate you guys being here, both of you. Hold on, hold on. Before we go, hold on. Hold on, Scott. Oh. <laughs> You know, we got to motivate them. We got to motivate the people, right? Show there we go. Ones. I got to show my one. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you had to do it. You show your one. I got to show my one. Bro. No, but listen, li listen, how cool is this, man? Like, like this, this is dope, man. And, and, and to me, it just shows that we did something yeah. that our, our, our peers check for us, man. You know, how many people, you know, like write stories or write songs that never come out, man. But the fact that you put it into, into fruition and you made that to a point where it's considered one of the best <laughs> is a beautiful thing. That in itself should inspire us all 
to know that we have it in us. And, and remember, don't make records, man, make history. We got the opportunity right now to make our own history and make it a good one, make it dope, you know? Amazing. Thank you guys so much. Well, thank you. Awesome. So thanks for having me, everybody. Thank you. And let's keep in touch, man. Like I'm about maintaining relationships and stuff like that. So you over there a lot. See, that's why I was asking you. Come on, make it there. Because you gotta keep putting them shots up, remember? You gotta, you gotta keep putting them jumpers up, right, bro? <laughs> you have to. You have to. So April, if you know a cool spot, I know Cask and Kettle is fresh. No, I'm talking about yeah. the song. I'm talking about the Sonic Detour. I'm talking about the jumpers being the songs. Okay, yes. yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Speaking of that, July 10th, guys, for all of you who can make it, we got a big show at the Phoenix Dinner Theater July 10th. Here in St. John. Here, Here in St. John. John, sorry. But July yeah. 10th? You know, we keep in touch, man. We will make it happen. Maybe we can right. do that uh, collaboration for that show. <laughs> Yo, let me see what's other popping, man. Right now, I got, I got so much work to do, but here's the beauty. At least we got a chance to connect today, right? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. and I enjoyed meeting everybody. Thank you. Jordan, we're definitely working with you too, fam. I've been watching you. Hey, I'll have you. I'll have you. <laughs> Yo, thanks for having me. Eh? Take hey, care, bro. guys. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, peace. Respect.